Everyone talks about how important sitting with proper posture is, but what even is correct posture? I'm going to be going over exactly that in this video. I'm going to get into my proper desk sitting position and I'll share with you the five main elements that you want to try to adopt when it comes to getting into a good sitting posture. Okay, you can't see my face, but that's okay. The first element is all about foot position. So when you're sitting at a desk, your feet should be able to be flat on the ground and your knees should be either pretty much parallel with your hips or just slightly below. If you have short legs and you find that your feet are always kind of like dangling up like this, you can also put like a box or there's even like foot rests that you can place your feet on so that you can get into this kind of a position. The second element is the low back. And to demonstrate this, I've tucked in my Henley committing a very offensive style crime. But just to show, show you better, your low back should naturally have this concave curve to it. And there's a couple different ways to achieve that. Some chairs will actually have a, a lumbar support. And if you don't have one, you can actually put like a small pillow at the back of the chair so that when you're resting against it, it has a, some lumbar support. I don't have one because the second method is what I prefer more. And that is instead of relying on the back of the chair, just scoot your butt away from the back of the chair and that kind of forces your, your core muscles to have to work to keep you upright. So a lot of times when you do that, it'll become more noticeable if you do slouch, and that'll give you that cue to turn on those core muscles to make sure that you're, you're in that nice low back curve. The third element is shoulder position. This one is pretty easy to do. So have your hands on your lap, and the way to get in a good shoulder position is to squeeze your shoulder blades back as far as you can, squeeze them together, and then relax about 30%. And then that should be a pretty good mark for shoulder position. Just make sure when you're pulling your shoulder blades back, we're not trying to shrug up. So we want these muscles at the top of the neck relaxed. So you're just squeezing back as far as you can and almost think down and back, and then relax 30%. And then that should be a pretty good position for your shoulders to maintain good posture. The fourth element is the neck. So when focusing on the computer, the neck can have a tendency to want to drift forward. So what we want to do is practice what's called a chin tuck. To do this, you have your chin here and you're literally just trying to bring it back toward your neck like you're giving yourself a double chin. So exactly what you wouldn't do for a photograph is what you're going to do. And so when you do this, we're not tilting down, we're not tilting back, we're bringing our chin back like this. And just like with the shoulder blade squeeze, we're going to relax about 30% of the way. And then that would be a pretty good position to keep your neck in. Now, some of this might be uncomfortable, like doing this and keeping that shoulder blade position that I just talked about. But just remember, the, those positions aren't, you're not meant to be in that ideal position all day because that could be uncomfortable. The point is to check in with yourself periodically through the day, and you should be getting into those positions some of the time. You shouldn't spend your entire time you know, in this forward slouch position. So a lot of it is getting some variability in how you posture yourself, not necessarily trying to maintain this stiff, rigid, proper posture the entire time. The fifth element is elbow placement. So when you're typing on a keyboard, your elbows should be roughly 90 degrees, which mine are uh, roughly at 90 degrees here. If your desk is too high, it will cause you to have your shoulder blades hiked up. And if it's too low, then you'll be, you know, down on your lap, reaching with your elbows straightened out. And that puts stress on your neck as well. So having your elbows at 90 degrees just kind of keeps everything in a, in a pretty stress-free position. Now this can get a little tricky when it comes to laptops. So I'll talk about that in just a second. Bonus tip because five rules just sounded a little bit better than six, but there is a six element to keep in mind, and that is monitor height. So if I'm looking at my monitor, I should basically, if I'm keeping my head facing forward, I should be staring at the top half of the monitor. If I'm looking, if I'm able to see directly past the monitor looking straight ahead, then I need to lift the monitor up, 
And then conversely, if the monitor is up really high, then I need to bring it back down. Now, if you're using a laptop, that makes things a little bit difficult because you want your elbows to be in good position, but you also want to be looking straight ahead. So for that, you kind of just have to weasel in between the two extremes. So for that, you might have to lift your laptop a little bit so your elbows are going to be bent more than 90, but that's okay. You just don't want it want them up really far, uh, but you also don't want to be staring too far down at your laptop. So I would say position your laptop to where, you know, your elbows are probably going to be bent a little bit more than 90 degrees and you're still going to be looking down, but you shouldn't have to like bring your chin down to be able to look at it. You should be able to get into that chin tuck position and still pretty much be able to see everything that's on your laptop screen. And that's probably the best case scenario. Now, of course, if you have a USB keyboard and laptop stand like I have here, that's probably the ideal route to go. But if you don't, that at least is a way to get around that. So if you follow these five tips plus the bonus, you will have yourself some pretty awesome sitting posture. Now I mentioned earlier in the video this thing about having a forward neck. Well that's called these days the nerd neck and so you've probably heard that, maybe not, but uh, it's becoming a lot more prevalent and I made a whole other video talking about it as well as the causes behind it. So if you find that you get some neck trouble with working at a computer, definitely check out that video which should be right around here somewhere. All right, so I hope this was helpful for you and I will see you in the next video.